everybody onto this co-main event where B. Joe Pfeiffer himself is taking on Abdul Razak Al-Hassan. And this is a interesting matchup because on the one hand, you've got Joe Pfeiffer, who is the talk of the town, you know, definitely a hyped prospect coming in at this stage of the game. He's got pretty sufficient grappling skills from what it looks like. You know, he had some submission wins, I believe, on the regional scene. That Doris choke, that front headlock series has proved to be pretty effective. But also he's got that lights out power. And I think that that's what Dana White likes to see. I think that that's why UFC matchmakers continue to put this guy in bigger and bigger opportunities. Um, you know, Joe Pfeiffer now at 11-2 and two is co-main eventing this card. I think they love to have middleweight fights in the co-main event. Because middleweight fights tend to finish at the highest rate. Shout out to our guy. I think it's Nate Lashaw. I've never heard it pronounced. So if I mispronounced it, I'm sorry, Nate. Uh, but I believe that's the statistician who's been doing a lot of UFC numbers. And one of the things he pointed out is that middleweight division has some of the highest um, finishing rates. And when I was talking about variants over the weekend, a lot of people clown me and I get it. You know, I was in the heat of the moment. I'm trying to, you know, just fire off my thoughts real quick. But what I'm talking about is in general, I just believe the middleweight division, the light heavyweight division, the heavyweight division, there's so much more inherent variance in those fights than fights in the, the lighter divisions, uh, just on average, I feel like. Um, and that's in part because of how much more likely they are to finish. So for me, that's something I try and take into account in my handicapping. Even if I feel like there's a big skill edge, like a Malcoon, um, you know, I, I actually had messaged my guy uh, library here. Um, you know, before the fight, and I just asked him about the market, what he thought of the Brundage market. And the reason being was just because I was like, is there some way that, that this guy Brundage is going to win this fight? And it happened to be a DQ, but it just felt to me like the market wasn't reflecting um, the percentage realities as I saw them in my head. So these are just the kind of things where from a long-term perspective, I like to talk about um, not just one fight, um, but how we talk about all fights and how we think about all these fights as they come up. So that way you guys can do your own independent research and, and come to your own conclusions. But when I look at this, I see a guy like Abdul Razak Al Hassan, um, you know, in a similar position almost as a guy like Bobby Green. And um, he, he's very skilled, right? And what separates him from a guy like Bobby Green is that he's got real finishing power, but he's 38 years of age. That's what I'm talking about in terms of comparison. You look at Abdul Razak Al Hassan and he's very skilled, but a lot of his career has passed him by. And when you look at, you know, a matchup like this, 12 and five overall record. He's not a bad fighter at all. He's six and five in the UFC. So over a 500 record, but that could all come crashing down with a quick loss to Joe Pfeiffer on Saturday night, uh, or excuse me, next Saturday night, not this Saturday night. But when you look ahead uh, to the future, why do I feel like Abdul Razak could be in trouble here? Well, we talk about this book. Uh, I got it right here on the side tray so we can have easy access. What does it tell us in this book, Fightnomics? I mention it all the time, and I like to have it uh, close by so we can use it as an example on the show. But it says that when fighters are over 38 years of age, that knockout rate, um, the loss rate by knockout, increases exponentially. So we got to take that into account when we're handicapping these fights. Abdul Razak Al Hassan, very big knockout puncher, but the same thing can be said for Joe Pfeiffer. Both guys that can deliver huge power shots on the feet. We know that about them. And I would argue, Claudio Hibanio in that last matchup had Abdul Razak in some danger, in some trouble, right? We saw that Abdul Razak was taking some big shots there to the leg and to the head, and he was able to get the better of him. He was able to land the bigger shots. He's had way more UFC experience. Claudio Hibanio has been knocked out in several fights now in the UFC, so it's not like it's a unique achievement there. And I feel like that was, you know, what's getting people back on the Abdul Razak train here in some regard. That would be a justification. He also head kicked Alessio Di Chirico, who's a guy who's kind of on the way out in the UFC, who hasn't been super productive lately. Let me just pull up his recent results. 13 and 7 overall, one win in 2021. Um, you know, that's his only win since 2018. So really not a guy who's been putting together a stellar resume in the UFC. And you look at a loss to Buckley via split decision. Lost to Malcoon via unanimous decision. Got flatline knocked out while he was on one foot uh, by Chaos Williams. Bad, bad loss. Chaos put him in the box there, if y'all haven't seen that one. Um, and then Munir Lazez, you know, another one where he missed weight in both of those uh, scheduled bouts, came in above the limit. And you guys will remember, he used to fight in the 170-pound division 
So now here in the middleweight division, later on in his career, seems like it's going to be, you know, Joe Piper being set up for success. And you look at the measurables, he is the younger fighter here by 11 years. He is the taller fighter here by three inches, or excuse me, by four inches. He is, uh, has a two inch reach advantage as well in the spot, 75 inches to 73 inches. So I think of Joe Piper as a guy who's fighting out of a good gym. I believe he's training with the Marquez MMA boys, um, Sean Brady and the crew getting in good work with good grapplers on the mat. He's still young. He's still on the right side of 30, a guy that they can market, promote, push up the card. He's got a nice story, a nice background, something that you could promote and market. And also he's put in a lot of work the hard way. You know, he's dealt with injuries. He's dealt with setbacks, but he's still a guy that's persevered. That's gotten the respect of the matchmakers, his fellow fighters. I feel like Joe Piper is a guy that they want to see do well. And so Abdul Razak Al Hassan, he's a guy that introduces a lot of variants. He can knock people the hell out. He's got big power. He's got good low kicks but his wrestling's not all that good he's not a natural middleweight he's a natural welterweight and he's in the later stages of his career so he has judo right judo abdul uh razak al hassan he's got that good uh judo background he's got good hips and he's got powerful devastating striking but his cardio is still something of a work in progress um he does seem to me like a guy who keeps his chin a little bit high in the air and we've seen him get caught when he's throwing those kicks from a too far of a distance with his hands down He's been drilled right on the chin, put in the box by Chaos Williams. That was a quick, quick knockout. So when I look at that on paper, I just say, you know, what is the UFC trying to do here? I think they're trying to set up Joe Pfeiffer to get another big win and a big 